Well, I'd like, my name is Walt Stinson. I'm your moderator today. Uh, I am um, a business executive and entrepreneur. I'm chairman of a trade group called ProSource, which is an educational and buying institution in the technology sector, uh, consumer electronics sector. I'm a director of the uh, Human Security for All campaign. And it's my pleasure to, to uh, host you today and welcome you to this session on business education for human security. I'd like to start out by giving you each an opportunity to introduce yourselves and uh, then we'll move into our topic. Uh, so Colin, I'll start with you. Can you introduce yourself and then we'll uh, rotate around. Thanks very much indeed, Walter. My name's Colin Mayer. I'm a professor at Oxford University. I was the first professor in the business school at Oxford University in 1994, and I was a former dean uh, of the business school. I led a program on the future of the corporation uh, at the British Academy, and recently I co-chaired a Scottish government commission on business purpose. And my interest is in the centrality of business education, leadership, and policy for promoting human security, health, economic, environmental, food, personal, community, and political security. Thank you. Very good. Big note. Hi, I'm Zbigniew Bochniaz, originally from Poland, uh, but uh, during my 54 years of academic career, I spent over 30 years in uh, the American universities, so graduated from Warsaw School of Economics as economist, starting with capital assessment uh, and then moving toward natural capital and then when I moved to the States uh, as a founding member one of, uh, of the Polish Ecological Club, I was very much interested in uh, market mechanisms for environmental protection. So I was lucky enough to meet Professor Hurwicz, Nobel Prize winner. And while working, he introduced me to market mechanisms for environmental protection in design institutions in Poland and other countries. And so I had to work also uh, uh, with uh, Olino, uh, Olino Ostrom, uh, Elina Ostrom on the institution. So from move to institutional economics. And then uh, Professor Porter invited me to join um, his new topic, uh, microeconomics, new program, microeconomics on competitiveness. And then I learned from him not only about competition, but also collaboration and the, uh, the role of social capital in be building clusters. So then uh, uh, I learned also that uh, just focusing on competitiveness is not enough. Building, I mean, creating shared values to move beyond just narrowly defined profit is very critical to resolve with a new business model, social and environmental problems. So anyway, and then uh, I moved back to Poland uh, a few years ago and started teaching at Kozminski University, the private business school with all international, five international accreditation. So this is really top private business school and uh, public uh, administration in Central Eastern Europe. So I'm here. And then teaching also, I mean, now, uh, sustainability in business, uh, strategies for sustainable development, and I'm including the um, human security uh, to the way of curriculum at, in the program of delivering uh, by student-centered approach and uh, within the learning community as a uh, way. Okay, this is probably enough at this point. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to the panel. Uh, I am not involved in teaching business, 
but I do research on business and human security. So uh, let me tell you a little bit by way of introduction uh, about, on the program uh, that we have been uh, implementing for the last five years or so at the London School of Economics. Uh, Business and Human Security Initiative is a research and implementation program uh, focused on understanding the role of business in society and developing new approaches and models that can mobilize business contribution to positive social outcomes and deliver development with security. So as part of our work, we have developed a framework which we call human security business partnerships, a mouthful, and, and we are looking for more elegant uh, formulation of the framework, which combines the concept of human security and smart partnering in an innovative form of association and cooperation between companies, communities, and other stakeholders based on identifying and leveraging what are their shared interests in specific situations of insecurity. So we apply human security both as an outcome of collective action involving business, that is delivering sustainable outcomes for business and improving people's daily life, as well as a methodology that supports engagement of those diverse actors working together to address problems that no single actor could achieve on their own. So it's very much uh, within this notion of social innovation. The framework emphasizes participatory processes for creating positive interactions between st stakeholders to improve the kind of freedoms envisaged in the human security concept and sustainable development goals. And it is intended to encourage the design of flexible, dynamic, and mutually beneficial agenda for action between business and other stakeholders, which is tailored to local circumstances. And what is specific uh, to our work, I would say, is that while we speak and engage with the global deba debates on business and human security, including in relation to the Agenda 2030, and indeed, uh, that's the reason why we, we've been invited uh, to join this conversation, our framework is designed to guide company uh, uh, community engagement at the operational level in sites where companies run their activities, where their contact with communities is most direct. And from there, we draw connections with national and international actors, processes, and dynamics. So, and finally, as I said, our research is practically relevant. Hence, we are testing the framework on the ground. And in parallel, we are engaging in outreach activities to inform our thinking about various aspects of the framework and how to improve it. Well, that's really exciting. And I'm um, looking forward to hearing more from you about that. Thank you. Shrijith, welcome. It's nice to see you. It's nice to see you, Walt. Uh, good, good morning to all of you. I'm Shrijith from India. I'm the partner and the founder of uh, Global Institute of Integral Management Studies, uh, which is a business school. We offer courses in uh, logistics and supply chain management. We have MBA, PG diploma programs here. I'm also one of the directors of World University Consortium and an associate fellow of World Academy of Art and Science. I have some business consultancies here in India. I'm basically a BSc agriculture graduate. I have some agriculture experience also. So I'm a consultant to some of the agriculture farms in India. That's about me. Nice to meet you all. Very good. Well, uh, we're here because we want to talk about business education in the context of the human security campaign. And um, I know that each of you know something about the human security campaign. And um, I'd like to hear from Colin. We'll go in the same order we went around the first time. I'd like to hear from each of you about your views on the current state of business education and how we can bring it into better alignment with uh, the human security um, concept, um, which uh, it revolves around a people-centered approach to security that is based on economic security, food security, 
environmental security, health security, personal security, community security, and political security, and differs from our previous concepts of security in that it really is a bottom-up approach rather than a top-down approach. Um, it is relevant to business education, I think, because business education, in my experience, has uh, to this point been more of a top-down type of educational experience where uh, the corporation is at the top, the education is uh, oriented around uh, maximizing the outcomes for the corporation, which is often very narrowly defined and doesn't pay uh, quite enough attention to the human security uh, pillars uh, as might be required in today's environment. So I know that each of you has thought quite a bit about that, and I'm looking forward to hearing your, your, uh, your thoughts about it and how your work aligns with this concept. So, Colin, we'll start with you. Thank you very much indeed, Walt. And your concerns are entirely justified because business education thus far has failed to deliver what it's potentially capable of in addressing these issues around human security. And the reason that it's failing is that it's failing to put the fundamental question that business and business education raise. And that is a question as to what is the purpose of business? Why does business exist? Why is it created? What, it's, what is its reason for being? Now, for 60 years, a business school education has started off with a strong presumption as to what the answer to that question is. And it's basically the notion that the purpose of business is to make money, to make money for its shareholders and for those who are in particular leading the organizations. And that notion has really come to drive our belief as to the sole function that business can perform. But that notion of what a purpose of business is, is increasingly being questioned and being questioned around the notion that it's bigger, broader, and it's higher than just making money. The notion of business that's gaining traction is one that says that, of course, profit is very important for business. It resources business and it incentivizes people. But it's important to understand that profit is not the purpose of business. Profit is derivative of what a purpose of a business is. And if you pose the question as to, well, what is that purpose in terms of its reason for being, why it's created, and what it's there to do, the answer is it's there to solve problems, to solve problems that you and I face as individuals, communities, societies, and the natural world, and to find ways of solving those problems in a form that is commercially viable and profitable. And furthermore, that in terms of solving those problems, it not, should not profit from imposing detriments on others. So an appropriate definition of what a purpose of business is is to produce profitable solutions for the problems of people and planet, not profiting from producing problems for either. Now, firstly, in relation to business education, the reason why that is critically important is that to date, business school courses have started with a presumption that the purpose of business is to make money. What this is saying is that a business school course should start from a question as to what is the purpose of business? Why does it exist? And what are those problems that business is there to solve and find commercially viable and profitable ways of solving them? 
And if one does that, then the whole nature of a business education takes on a very different form. It takes on a form that recognizes the centrality of business in society and the role that it plays in creating, not undermining, human security. And in that regard, it's very important to recognize that this notion of purpose is not something that is just a marketing campaign or promotional. It's not really just about corporate social responsibility. And it's certainly not just about philanthropy. It's about hard-nosed business. It is what business should be doing as its core, at the heart of business. It should be driving its strategy, and it should be recognized that business's role in solving problems profitably is what every business should start off by determining as its fundamental driver. And business school education should make it clear that that is the determinant of why business exists. And everything in terms of courses on marketing, strategy, finance, accounting, operations management, operational organizations, those should follow as a natural product of why businesses exist. We failed to determine the very fundamental starting point of how we should be determining business education and which, what should therefore be driving everything in terms of the leadership, the management, the resourcing, and the outcomes and performance of business. That's uh, really fascinating. And I agree with you completely. I would say that um, most, I deal a lot with entrepreneurs. Um, uh, I'm chair of an organization that has 600 mostly entrepreneurial, you know, first generation type companies that are not publicly listed. And I would say that most of these companies, if not all of them, started out with the, with the mission that you just mentioned, which was to solve a problem. Um, it's interesting that business education doesn't align with the way many companies actually get started which is to solve a problem, but uh, somehow in the process of developing the education, it becomes kind of technocratic in, or, in uh, its emphasis and loses the original mission of the founders. So hopefully we can come back to that later. Dignip. Uh, I, I could not agree more with Colin what he said. This is exactly... Uh, Business is for solving problems in profitable way. Profitable, it means, you know, nobody will subsidize them. They will get a return. And this is what the new business model is about. I would say, you know, I mean, don't want to repeat uh, the excellent argument uh, uh, what uh, Colin used. Uh, uh, but uh, so... I follow the concept of uh, Michael Porter and uh, uh, Kramer was when they presented to 2011 the uh, creating shared value concept. Exactly, this is what this multi crisis what we experienced 2008 and uh, these days. This is the heritage or legacy of 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 the wrong business model. So I would only say, you know, I mean, that the, if I would redefine, you know, I mean, because it's excellent. If I would add, you know, uh, the business should refocus in uh, offering or creating value, not from uh, for stockholders, but for stakeholders, all from starting from on employee to community, not only around community, but also to global community. And this is uh, exactly uh, the we need to already find. So we still have a wrong uh, uh, way to go. Unfortunately, you know, this is uh, the, the, the process, uh, the, the change of corporate culture is not that fast. However, if you observe the uh, development of global uh, uh, compact, uh, organization it is amazing how fast they they started developing there are more and more 
uh, corporation and also um, or other organization in, in joining there are uh, I believe about uh, 15,000 members from 150 countries so and then they have all the, these elements what we are talking about sustainability as well as major elements of human uh, security I mean the concept of uh, of uh, human security uh, is uh, <clears throat> covered in terms of creating shared values because it, it gives the the opportunity you know to secure the 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 for uh, working conditions and uh, um, where uh, wages, salaries, and also care for the environment. What I would like to add, what came out from yesterday's discussion, uh, and then uh, uh, you ask uh, well, the question, what are the deficiencies? I, I should say also that with the impact, uh, global compact uh, organization, the business school, particularly in the United States, they are teaching uh, sustainable development courses and uh, uh, more and more um, refocusing from narrow profit orientation to uh, to uh, to the larger concept, which uh, embrace many aspects of of uh, human security. However, it's not uh, enough, and we have still problems in teaching uh, the the business model. I mean. Uh, my university in Poland is one of the first which introduced the sustainable development as a major curricula for, for the degree and so on. But uh, this, now uh, we need to move further. We need to move beyond just sustainability, which would mean, you know, from economic point, the constant uh, uh, capital, you know, I mean, uh, all of forms. We need to move to a regenerative development. We need to create more than we use, you know, because there are a lot of uh, the environment is uh, distracted, uh, damaged, and then we need to invest in, in more in human capital in developing countries to give them the chance to grow. So. Anyway, uh, this is the, the, the discussion now, and I, I'm pleased to see that there are already Mark uh, yesterday was talking with several of you about the, um, the concept of regenerative development, which is moving beyond sustainability. But anyway, and this is something what I feel uh, comfortable that it will uh, embrace the, um, the concept of human security. And coming back uh, to the last session, you were a uh, panelist. I think that we need to uh, include more uh, in our uh, delivery the, uh, system, the uh, technology, which uh, uh, Vitor particularly was talking about, the, 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 the digital twins, you know, I mean, teaching, uh, based on already achieved results in learning and experience, building on the experience. What I see, and it works pretty well, last 10, 15 years, I am practicing that type of uh, community, uh, learning community systems with student center. When you, and the particular team project, uh, um, action research, it gives the opportunity for students to expand the uh, experience, learn from each other, and develop very important elements which are very missing, you know, in, in current situation. Tolerance to diversity, understanding different culture, understanding much larger uh, environment going beyond your country. I teach the class now, with about 20 students uh, that are from seven nations. So if you have that type of uh, composition, and in Europe we have this Erasmus excellent program, it enrich the uh, uh, approach to, uh, to human needs and then 
uh, uh, respect to uh, to other culture and also learning from the other's experience so at this point um, uh, it would be my um, answer thank you Desna. yes um i think um i'm very much uh, in line uh, with with uh, uh, professor mayer's argument and what I would say on my part is that I think um, business education is really uh, aligned uh, with this, or the change in business education ought to be aligned with this change in the uh, uh, econ economic paradigm, which places individual uh, communities and uh, societal well being at the center and which understands uh, development as empowerment and um, as transformational process. So uh, if this is the new paradigm, you know, then uh, that requires different understanding of the role of business. So we see now the evolution from where business was really uh, perceived as a, as a, as a development uh, tool to uh, being a development agent. And now most recently, we we started thinking about uh, business as a development partner um, in addressing complex, uh, complex uh, societal uh, needs and in uh, contributing to, to empowerment and development with dignity. So, you know, if these are this, uh, if this is a global, uh, a broader framework in which business education uh, take, takes place, then you know, we need to, to uh, change both the curricula and the method of delivering uh, education to business students. And I think uh, what, 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 as far as I uh, uh, understand, because as I said, I don't teach on, on business courses, there, there is a merit in pushing for more um, uh, for the type of, of, of training that puts students more um, in contact with real life situations, with real life uh, problems, uh, uh, with uh, those uh, actors or uh, who are ultimately affected by what what, uh, what the uh, the decisions or or the strategies that uh, business uh, puts puts in place so um, I think uh, what I'm trying to say is not just about uh, teaching uh, new concepts but it's also about of, of method of delivery and teaching students to um, be able to appreciate real life uh, situations and uh, understand uh, in order to understand how business can contribute positively to uh, change the, the, the situation uh, on the ground, the, the potential negative impact of its presence in, in local communities. Well, we get what we measure, don't we? So uh, what's going on at the London School of Economics to change the uh, way in which business performance is actually measured? Uh, say it again. I, I didn't understand. Uh, is there anything going on at, at, at the school to actually teach students a new way of measuring success in, in business? Um, for example, um, how is the London School of Economics dealing with students today uh, in their education regarding externalities? Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not involved in, in the teach, teaching side, you know, but I, I, I do know that as far as uh, business and society uh, agenda is concerned, that there are uh, graduate courses and graduate, pro, uh, in graduate programs that do uh, look into, into uh, these issues. Okay, well, we'll get back to that question. I'm sure that our uh, Colin and Vigna probably have a comment on that. Shrijith, you're dealing with things uh, at, at more of a grassroots level. Tell us about what you see. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
we have been discussing for the last two days uh, that this era is an era of uncertainties and unprecedented challenges. Wars, conflicts, climate change, ecological imbalances, health issues, shortage of energy, food and fertilizers, economic slowdown and lack of jobs are some of the major challenges which the world is facing. We cannot say that different world organizations or nat uh, national governments, business leaders or decision makers did not have the capacity to manage all these issues, at least for a while or uh, for a few years of time. But we all may agree that comprehensive and sustainable solutions for all these human security issues are possible through individual empowerment, which in turn can happen only through proper education and uh, business education in particular got a huge role to play. Uh, actually, the world has been moving significantly in this direction. Very many universities and education institutions had started addressing this. But how can we create a universal model of education where we can prepare youngsters with the adequate skills, knowledge, attitude, and values to face an uncertain future? Yes, yes. Very challenging question. System of education should transform youngsters as critical thinkers, problem solvers who understands and uh, shares the aspiration and values of the society at large. Students should transform as global citizens who can take the responsibility of the world issues rather than merely working for a company. I have some experiences in this direction. As I spoke before, uh, I'm running a logistics and supply chain management institution in India, perhaps the largest uh, one in our country. Uh, logistics and supply chain management deals with the movement of goods and services. And this sector is well connected directly with the day-to-day -day human needs and human life. With the 1.4 billion population, logistics and supply chain management is a booming sector in India. There are around uh, 2 million new, new jobs getting created in this sector annually in India. I would like to share three examples to demonstrate how some pedagogical changes in logistics education can directly and positively impact on assuring human security. I had mentioned that our field of study primarily deals with scientific and economic movement of goods and services around the globe. If you take the example of uh, recent COVID vaccines, Thanks to the medical fraternity and labs for uh, developing vaccines, but making vaccines available on time to hospitals, to health workers, and the general public are uh, equally or sometimes far more important. World had moved more than 12 billion vaccines in less than 10 months in 2021. Vaccines had moved even to the most geographically challenging areas. We at our institution, have incorporated this real life situation in its true essence into our curriculum of moving life-saving medicines. Second example is uh, you know, logistics, uh, transportation, packaging and packing is significantly damaging the ecology of health. Although it serves the purpose of satisfying human needs, there is an assessment that the global pollution caused, caused due to a movement of heavy trucks, ships, and plastic packets to carry goods and services from one place to another contributes to 40% of the global pollution. We have identified similar contextual stories and transformed it into new original course of green supply chain management, green warehouses, and green sustainable concepts followed by uh, leading companies like Apple, Amazon, and FedEx. We have also developed a series of 200 stories connecting logistics and life, for instance, natural calamities such as floods, earthquake, fire, et cetera, and logistics. That is how we should uh, move things when an area is affected by natural calamities. We develop stories connecting festivals and logistics, or uh, even football, World Cup uh, at Doha and logistical arrangements, agriculture and logistics, you know, even filmmaking or mountaineering and logistics space logistics, so on and so forth. Our entire academic program had turned into a series of life instances. 
we have a strong belief that this life based education will help students in gaining some practical experiences to face uncertain circumstances in future thanks to the tremendous support by world university consortium especially gary jacob salvatore sukoni and janani harish in establishing a student centered contextual education which helped our institution to get the status of a model institution and a collaborating partner of logistic sector skill council promoted by ministry of skills government of india we can find that a lot of parallels between logistics education or management education and human security these parallels can be found in any disciplines of education is an understanding what we have universal model of uh, education addressing the needs of an uncertain future can thus be developed in a contextual way it can be value based where students personality and life instances or social issues can be given uh, the prime preference this student centered contextual approach can address all the elements of human security related concerns is the central theme of thought which i would like to share thank you thank you shrijesh um so uh, colin let's get back to what you were talking about a little bit earlier um but before i do shrijesh um you've um you've had uh, your your company basically is involved in um in education and educating um a particular type of employee for a particular business segment that is uh, in high demand in india correct that's correct it's logistics and you've seen some success in how you've um put together a program to address that need how does your program differ from what's come before it and why and if it's been successful why do you think it's been successful actually from the year of inception in 2014 itself you know we were getting a really good number of students and uh, i was able to engage some really good faculty members in south part of india to take our classes i was in a false notion that you know if i am appointing some faculties and researchers to take care of students uh, naturally students will be getting empowered and uh, acting as some uh, disciplined uh, corporate professionals actually but i uh, uh, everything was going on well but uh, in the second year when i got a call from some of the uh, companies uh, telling that you know your students are not uh, value based they are shifting jobs uh after the training program in 3 months they are quitting jobs and getting into another company so i uh, uh, ran and uh, you know uh, took some uh, guidance from uh, gary jacobs of only telling i told that you know i am facing some issues my business school is progressing um being a partner i am uh, i am making profits but the thing is you know our students are not up to the mark you know many companies are complaining from that day onwards you know he started guiding us and uh, he started uh, teaching us you know what is all about this contextual education we were following some university syllabuses and some governmental uh, you know curriculum uh, in the field of logistics and uh, supply chain management that was not enough we started developing stories as i mentioned before uh, we connected festivals with the logistics we connected movies and logistics we connected natural calamities and logistics and now what we are providing is a, a series of 200 uh, stories every day one story and explaining that story taken from life um, and uh, a two and a half of our of session uh, discussing about the various points this particular thing what we uh, what we uh, established there in our business school created a kind of enthusiasm among students and you know nowadays uh, students are getting placed even without interviews because uh, the seniors are performing really well immediately after completing uh, the education we are posing enough challenges in the class and in the way in which we deliver that uh, students are directly establishing their businesses as well you know directly converting the plus entrepreneurs uh that makes my that makes my uh, studies uh, 
uh, I'm not putting much money for the promotion activities and all. Seniors are, uh, you know, referring uh, new newcomers actually who are there in companies. Our alumni itself is referring, and uh, we become uh, slowly the largest logistics and supply chain management providers uh, in India. Actually. Great. Thank um, uh, big new. I'd like to go back to you for a moment and. Okay. Um, what's changing in business curriculum to address uh, these human security issues and some of the issues that Colin raised earlier? Um, is there an attempt to change the way uh, I mentioned uh, to Vesna earlier that I feel that you get what you measure and a lot of uh, the performance that business produces has to do with the, um, the systems that we utilize to measure performance within the business, starting with the operating statement, for example, um, and the balance sheet. Uh, we know that the operating statement does not reflect externalities, that the balance sheet is also uh, missing a lot of assets and liabilities. Um, is there any movement of, afoot in your world to address these weaknesses in business reporting systems? Okay, uh, I think that uh, uh, what has happened uh, uh, somehow independently or 2005, uh, it was uh, appearance first of the sustainability uh, science journal when in which they presented the fourth uh, the fourth dimension or pillar of sustainability, institutional sustainability, which should protect democracy, care, and justice. In 2014, United Nations uh, included to, as an obligatory to, to report on, on uh, uh, institutional sustainability. But in between, I guess from 2010, the financial corporation included this as as uh, 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 um, as uh, uh, social uh, S E G <laughs> S E Gs, you know, so non uh, financial uh, um, indicators, which include social uh, and uh, and uh, environmental and governance. So it means democracy. This is a part, I think, that uh, of implementation in the business. Uh, that type of uh, concern, which covers the um, large part of, not all, but large part of human security. The same time, the environmental accounting is also developing, which is helpful. We will see the next important step when uh, there are serious talks in the European Union to make ESG obligatory procedures. It will push uh, things uh, forward and then to include this is what economists are talking from pigo you know to internalize negative externalities uh, you know into accounting you know it would happen you know a lot of things i wrote on this topic you know and in general the, the economic mechanisms are for this so in poland we introduced uh, the um the mechanism which uh, uh, help to finance during the first uh, 10 years of transformation up to 90% of environmental expenditures. And then Poland cut industrial pollution 75% uh, 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 sulfur oxide and uh, NOx about 50, 60%, and so on. So it was significant boost for uh, the business to really move toward uh, uh, investing in environmental protection, cutting the, uh, uh, the, the, the pollution, the externalities. Unfortunately, not all uh, elements were included, uh, household transportation, so non-point sources were left behind. So we have still problems in, in Polish city because coming from different sources, but not from the industry. Industry, except part of, of energy sectors, okay. But in general, the things are moving in terms of 
internalizing external costs. And uh, the major uh, issue would, I would like to raise today, you know, and and I think that Colin would agree with me that, and then this is the major idea also which came out from the previous sessions, uh, some said, that it should be internal pressure from companies to perform according to the standard or expectations. So I mean, the peer pressure is one of the factors, you know, I mean, now we see the reporting, you know, uh, carbon uh, footprint, you know, and then, you know, being carbon uh, uh, neutral and so on. There is a growing peer pressure which will make this uh, environment uh, uh, type of internal force. That is because, you know, regulations are needed. Okay. I mean, the NGOs pressure, boycotts and so on. Okay. But the most important is, you know, to internalize it because you create new corporate culture. Well, let's and hear from Colin. It, when, the, when the leaders embrace this, this is, I mean, I, I used to live 20 years in Minnesota and, you know, the vice president of 3M was telling me, speak, you know, whenever I see the uh, pollution, it is 98% related to this efficiency. So pollution is bad for business, you know, and then, you know, I mean, if you, have that type of thinking, you know, is, is the best, you know, this they develop the, the word pollution prevention they phase. They know. wouldn't feel that way. If this it is was something up, what, what is they were reporting, uh, would it? Yeah. So so let's hear from Colin on that uh that point. So Zib's absolutely right that what is needed is for it to be internalized within business. Responsible business is good business and good business should be responsible but business is not always responsible and irresponsible business unfortunately still thrives so we need to recognize first of all the incredibly damaging consequences of that because we've recognized in the session the growing crises that we find, find around the world, and that this is becoming a real threat to our democratic systems, let alone to issues around human security. And to do this, we need to align incentives with responsibility. That what is what makes good business universally beneficial. And to do that, we need to recognize this notion of purpose as being about solving problems profitably, yeah. not profiting from solving, from creating problems. Because what that means- at the business, In the business school, how do you teach this? How are you gonna introduce the, uh, this? The in way in which we teach this is by saying, well, what derives from that definition is a notion of a profit. Profit, is associated with solving problems, not creating problems. And therefore, as Zib was trying to explain, it implies straight away that a company has to mitigate, remedy, rectify the damage it causes to the environment, to societies, to people. And it has to recognize that it has to account for those costs and measure its profit after accounting for those costs. I, I think that's the point, isn't it? That we need uh, we need a, a, a different way of accounting for profit that is more comprehensive and um, accurate in terms of the actual impacts on society, particularly on human security issues. Exactly right. Uh, we're running out of time here, but I would like to give Vesna an opportunity to comment on these points from her perspective. Sure. Thank you. I think for us, you know, it's um, it's really about um, how we how we understand and how we uh, come up uh, with the metrics to capture 
human security as as something that is um, very contextual and very culturally defined, that very much uh, is uh, shaped by an individual uh, perceptions and experiences. Because uh, this is, you know, it's not uh, one way of looking at it is that you address individual asp uh, components of, of, of human security as defined in, in its original definition. But uh, when it comes to uh, translating it, or if you like, operationalizing uh, and applying it to a specific uh, context, specific community, a particular individual, and trying to assess that uh, uh, individual's experience of, of security slash insecurity, it's very complicated because we are dealing with very um, fuzzy uh, concepts, concepts and variables. Uh, so you may, uh, comp so we are still in a, in a phase, at least in our in our program, uh, where we are trying to think, you know, how this uh, uh, can affect the way in which uh, business thinks about ESG metrics how uh, how um, this notion of human security and, and as you yourself rightly uh, pointed out business what is measurable gets measured and that's how business operates and what that's how you know this uh, practice of report, financial reporting and focusing on quantitative indicator indicators works but human security um, as a contextual, uh, culturally uh, uh, defined uh, phenomena, is quite quite uh, complex to to translate. You know, so this is where we are trying still. I think to to understand how best uh, to to marry the two, to link that uh, lived experience of human security that comes from confluence of, of different actors and different forces, different processes to the to the what companies are doing and what they should be reporting and then claiming that what they are doing has a positive impact on, on human security outcomes. Great. Well, thank you for those comments. Um, I, I feel very strongly that human security is a concept that is driving business strategy because it is affecting societal aspirations and it is affecting government regulations and that there will be more and more pressure on companies going forward to align themselves with human security pillars if they wish to be profitable in the future. So Colin, I think you've got the wind at your back uh, right now. So take advantage of this moment. I want to thank you all very much, and Vesna also, I know that you're working on this very hard. Well, thank you all for your participation.